There are many terrifying things within the cyberpunk world and within Night City. There are the dodgy corporations who would take you out in your sleep if you were to do something small such as speak out against them. There are the lawless lands of the Pacifica region where you can be taken out for looking at the rulers funny. And even the horrifying cyber psychos who will massacre anyone and anything standing in their way displaying their aggressive arsenal they have gathered over the years. However, one of the most terrifying things that might appear when you least expect it could be carrying their red balloons, holding what looks like a water pistol but is an incredibly powerful smart weapon and may laugh their heads off as they slaughter you and everyone around you, stating, let's have some fun. This group of individuals would be known as the Bozos, a prankster gang originating in Night City that took the image of clowns and would go around terrorizing everyone simply for the fun of it. For anyone who has an incredible fear of clowns, the mere idea of a Cyber Psycho dressed as Krusty the Clown showing up, singing Send in the Clowns, and then attacking everyone is probably something that will keep you up at night. And if you're terrified of the film It, then boy oh boy you might as well seek a new life on the Crystal Palace space station because these guys will definitely target you most of all. But who are the Bozos? How did they set up? What do they get up to? And where are they now? Well in today's spooky episode we will be exploring an innate fear many have have, the fear of cyber clowns taking over the world. This is the story behind the baggy clothed, red nose wearing prankster gang. This is the spooky story behind the bozo gang from Night City. For the world, gangs were not a new thing. There have been countless over the many years before the 2000s, terrorizing all the different cities. However, as the new millennium came around and the world finances got worse, more and more started being set up. And by 2013, there were a wide variety of them, especially within North America and Night City. These would include such gangs as booster gangs or boosters, gangs that would go around enhancing themselves with the latest and best cyberware to try and threaten everyone around them. This gang being the most common throughout the land with gangs such as Maelstrom being one of the biggest within Night City and having the most cases of cyber psychosis compared to all of the others. The others being nihilist gangs who many know as being terrorists who will actively go around and cause as many atrocities as they possibly can. Known for being suicidal or self-destructive in their violence, these gangs will have no real religious beliefs and just do it for the fun of it. With the most known gang being the Voodoo Boys. And then we have the gang type known as the Prankster Gang, who, as the name implies, go around doing as many pranks as they possibly can on each other and the people around them. These Prankster Gangs will vary, however, with some being pretty harmless, just a bit annoying to anyone who encounters them, such as the Philharmonic Vampires, who just cause financial problems to anyone they hit. And the others being far more sadistic and extremely dangerous. And this is where the Bozo Gang sits being known all over Night City as being one of the most deadly out there. This story sort of begins within the year of 1994 when Richard Knight University would be created and would be the academic heart of his model city. This campus was to be huge and on the western edge of the beautiful Lake Park to counter the built up skyscraper dominated area of the corporate center on the other side. By 2009 the campus continued to grow and it was officially renamed as Night City University. University. By 2020, the university grew massively in numbers, having around 15,000 students who commuted from all over the city to study their chosen subjects. With such a high population traveling to and from this university, this would only go on to lead to certain individuals wanting to cause trouble, mess around with the students, and just be an outright nuisance to them on a daily basis. And with it, the rise of the prankster gangs began within the heart of Night City. For the bozos, they 
would be the main gang located within this area, setting themselves up just outside of the Night City University within the artist's colony. For anyone walking to and from the university, they would go on to witness a large group of individuals heavily dressed in old school clown costumes, fully kitted in what looked like makeup and tons of equipment with them. However, what made this Bozo gang so unique and honestly quite terrifying was that their faces and whole physical nature wasn't just powdered makeup and oversized costumes. The Bozo gang in fact went through full biosculpting processes to morph them into these giant horrifying clowns with permanent frowns and long floppy feet. A few of them also had cyberware attached to their bodies, giving them reddish eyes to make them look more scary, massive arms coming out of the back of them, or even terrifying teeth and other weird body features. Originally when the gang first set up, they were pretty calm with their antics being your standard prankster group, going around doing things to wind people up and then going about finding other victims. And although their first appearance would imply they were extremely aggressive, most within the early years of 2020 just said they were extremely annoying. However, at some point during their years at the campus, different ideas would pass through the ranks and suddenly what was a harmless group of weird clown people turned into something extremely dark as they became renowned as the ultimate killer clown gang. Alongside this gang were another group of performers known as the Juilliard. These were simple street performers, but due to how hostile the streets were, they had formed into a defensive gang, carrying weapons with them at all time and would not hesitate to take anyone out if they tried anything. This meant people left them alone and vice versa. However, for the bozos, they would do the exact opposite, seeking out anyone they saw as prey to essentially destroy them whilst having some fun. It was reported, although it's pretty obvious at this point in time, that all of the members of the Bozo gang were actually fully insane, with reports that one third of their members were officially suffering from cyber psychosis. Now fully embracing the new way of life, this Bozo gang would go around torturing and murdering people simply for their own entertainment, and as mentioned before, would go around shouting, let's have some fun, just before attacking their victims. One of their favorite pastimes would be playing with their prey, making them absolutely fear them before they would be killed. With this, the clowns would lurk in apartments in the dark, maybe in their victim's room, in the basement, car park, or anywhere just out of sight, making you constantly on edge whenever you went home. They would also go on to lock some of their victims in small spaces like lockers that would be filled with rats, giving them one of the most horrifying and painful deaths you could imagine. They would also stop elevators midway and fill them with water, then closing the hatch and watch them drown. And those were just some of their chosen ways of toying with their victims and killing them in the end. And on some occasions, will also turn their victims into prank traps to lure in more people that they can torture, turn insane and kill to continue the ongoing cycle. As the gang got more comfortable and sophisticated with their killings, they would use a different method of seeking out victims compared to other gangs within the area. Unlike the voodoo boys who were also seeking out victims within the artist colony, the Bozo gang would target victims from anywhere in the city. Once they found a perfect target who was seen as physically and mentally weak, the gang would stop at nothing to get them and if they didn't kill them immediately in a horrific way, they would follow them for months on end, trying to push them so far that they would eventually lose their mind completely and go fully insane. Maybe even join the Bozo ranks. By the mid 2020s, not much is known about the structure of the gang as a whole. However, it was widely believed that the current leader at the time in their history was actually a corp. And not just any old corp, but a former Arasaka research tech who had taken all of his knowledge of Arasaka's projects and had brought them into the Bozo gang ranks, developing them some truly terrifying weapons and cyberware that the gang could use for their horrors. But the gang didn't just stop there. As they moved into the later 2020s, the Bozos would also dive into the net themselves and utilize that as another form of seeking out individuals and torturing them from the inside. Something that would be absolutely terrifying for anyone just simply wanting to dive into the net. One minute you are scrolling some data, the next you are met face to face with a heavily modified cyber 
cyber clown wanting to cause your brain to explode from the inside whilst people in the real world just watch you suffer whilst you are drowning. After the fourth corporate war came about and the whole of Night City suffered from the Holocaust caused by Militech's secret operation on the Arasaka Tower, the Bozo Gang disappeared for a bit, most likely making sure they were miles away from the blast area and the red zone in the center of the corporate plaza. As the 2040s came about and Night City entered the time of the red, the Bozo Gang rose once again, bringing about even more fear for the people of Night City to contend with. With the Bozos rising once again, it became clear that nothing had ultimately changed with them. They were essentially the same gang as before, still looking to torture and kill for fun and finding barbaric ways to execute those goals. The only thing people could do if they saw a member of the Bozo Gang was simply run from the area. And if they were to be lurking in your apartment in the dark and you were to in fact spot one, well the best thing to do is pack your bags and leave for another part of the country or world. Oh, and probably light the apartment on fire when you leave because that clown will most likely follow you to wherever you set up your next life. The only thing that did change during this time was the rumor of a new leader of the gang. This leader had one single name, that being the Great Bozo. But despite people all over Night City talking about this deadly leader, no one ever saw them, making it hard to clarify if they were truly real or not. But one thing was for certain, in this time there was definitely a new leader as the gang were far more aggressive and seemed to have things in place, allowing them to thrive. Within the year of 2045, however, things were to dramatically change for the Bozo Gang for the worst this time. In an attempt to cause havoc and cause an internal power struggle, a group of supposedly fake Bozos would go and venture into the Night City bar named the Forlorn Hope. This bar was a hotspot for people who were freelancers looking for work of all kinds within Night City, including solos, edge runners, net runners, and fixers, meaning that attacking this area would be an extremely risky thing to do, and anyone that survives would most likely hunt you down. But for these fake bozos, they would indeed head into the Forlone Hope bar and would open fire on all of the clientele within there. After the horrific attack on the bar, the whole of the bozo gang would go on to be hunted down by multiple solos who were closely aligned with the Hope bar. But as the solos continued on their attacks on any and all Bozo gang members, eventually the true culprits would be exposed to the Bozos themselves, and suddenly it was revealed that they were not the true members of their gang, but only looking to tear them down by unleashing the wrath of all solos within Night City. Now with those culprits revealed, a huge civil war was to take place within the Bozo gang, where those rebel Bozos went against their once fellow members and their supposed leader, the Great Bozo and instead started to follow a new member of the society. This man being known as the Big Top, who was the mastermind of this whole coup operation that was to be named as the Hilaria of 2045. The Big Top was now the rebel leader and what a presence he was. A heavily modified clown that had cyber arms coming out the back of him to attack his prey as if he were a human spider hybrid with added clown. Now in charge of his new faction, the Big Top didn't just motivate others to join him. He instead had other plans to make his split-off gang bigger. Here he would go on to capture, body sculpt and brainwash a bunch of scrubs and with all of those new troopers would send them to do horrible atrocities all throughout the city to give the Bozo gang a bad name, but also to just cause problems for everyone. This included the attack on the Forlorn Hope, which was revealed to be one of Big Top's biggest attacks. With two Bozo factions now facing each other, there would be battles happening all over over the city as circuses in which the bozos lived within would start destroying each other in an attempt to show dominance. This wasn't like any other civil war however, this was a full on prank war where both gangs would try and outdo each other in prank arenas which could lead to deaths galore or tons of property damage to the city. As the civil war reached its peak with each of the gang members trying to out prank each other, it would eventually lead to many of the bozo gang leaving the city, maybe searching for other places to prank people and torture them or just for a new place to set up their circuses which might have been lost during the Hilaria event of 2045. One thing was left within Night City after this though and that was tons of gift wrapped boxes that were fully decorated with a yellow bow and were placed all over the metropolis. What was in the gift wrapped box 
would most likely be a prank left by the Bozo gang, and if anyone were brave enough to open it, they might find themselves at the mercy of the absolute sadists that were the cyber clowns. But as the decade turned into the 2070s, it would seem that all of the members of the Bozo gang had disappeared. This might have been due to the events of the Unification War and the fear that Night City was to turn into NUSA territory. But regardless of what that reason was, the Bozo gang was no more. Or at least, that is what it seemed anyway. For a lot of the residents of Night City, they would talk about the gang still and the horrors that they put on the people back in the day. Some telling it as horror stories just to scare people before they go to sleep or during Halloween. Or some warning that one day this group of terrifying cyber clowns will return and when they do, chaos will ensue all over the city once again. For one Maximum Mike, a host of the radio station known as Morrow Rock Radio, he would go on to speculate that there was one member of the gang left within Night City, a newer member who had just returned from wherever he left to, and due to his appearance, it was quite clear that he must have been a member of this gang and that he should be watched at all times, because no doubt he was insane and could cause utter destruction. This man would be known to all those who met him as Ozob Bozo, and Maxim Mike was indeed correct. He was back in the city, entering its border in the year of 20. 2077. Ozob was born in Brazil and from a very early age shown signs of being a troubled individual from a terrifying family. This was shown due to the fact that back when he was a child, Ozob's own brother ripped off his nose with a pair of pliers and instead of finding a replacement nose or seeking out cybernetics to replace it like any sensible person would, Ozob would instead attach a grenade to his face stating that it displayed his style better and most likely scared anyone who came through face to face with him, worrying that he'll explode at any moment. At some point in his life, Ozob became a merc and ventured all over North America, and it was most likely here where he ventured into Night City and either became a member of the Bozo gang or part of the Solos trying to fight back against them. He could have even been the great Bozo himself, but got rid of that title to live another life when leaving Night City eventually. Whatever the reason, when he travelled back to the Neon Metropolis within 20 2077, it didn't take long for Ozob to get reacquainted with the city, although in his eyes, the city had surprisingly changed a lot from when he was last there. Maybe because when he was last there, the Hilaria event of 2045 was taking place and clowns were pranking each other all over. But regardless, Ozob was here for a reason, and that would become clear to the merc known as V after receiving a sudden text message from the odd grenade-faced clown from Brazil. To Ozob, V was highly recommended and was seen as one of the best mercs in town, and who better to help him with his mission of revenge? Arriving at Ozob's destination, the famous merc would be shocked at the weird clown man that had just gotten into their car, focusing massively on the bright red grenade where their nose once was. As they started driving, Ozob revealed barely anything about his mission, only that they had to get to Little China so he could enter a building, and all V had to do was sit there and wait in the car and maybe protect them if needed need be. As the two got to the location, Ozob would enter the building alone and within a few seconds a giant explosion blew out all of the building's windows and suddenly Ozob was seen sprinting out of the building shooting a ton of tiger claws with V's help and with that done, Ozob thanked V for their services and suddenly left the area. His moment of chaos was done and that would be the last V saw of the mad clown in person, or so they thought anyway. Over in Pacifica, Ozob remained a perfect place place for the crazed individual as it was a combat zone filled with other crazed individuals looking to kill and outdo one another with violence. On their quest to become the best underground boxer there is in Night City, V would meet Ozob who was one of the challengers and would challenge them to an illegal match. Here V would go on to beat Ozob but how they beat Ozob would be down to what mood V was on that day. If V were to take it easy and just to knock out Ozob, they would be rewarded with financial compensation and the two would walk away way once again, never to really meet again. However, if V were to land a fierce punch right on Ozob's nose, his live grenade on his face would detonate, killing him instantly and giving V a technical knockout and giving Ozob 
his glorious explosive death that he always wanted. If this were to be the case, Ozob and the Bozo gang would officially have no presence within Night City during the year of 2077, and Ozob would forever be remembered within the North Oak Columbarium, where his remembrance wall would read simply, we live in a society. True passionate words that I'm sure many of us can agree on. And maybe with Ozob's death, society can heal from what was in a terrifying time where cyber clowns used to go around pranking everyone and torturing their victims. Or maybe one day these horrific looking clowns will return and for the solos of Night City they will have to rise up together to try and take them out and stop their terrorizing on the land. Where these clowns would prank individuals and turn them all utterly insane. But maybe we will just have to wait and see what the Bozo gang has in store for us. But for now this has been the story of the cyber clown pranksters. This has been the story of the terrifying gang known as the Bozos. I want to say a big thank you for watching this video and a huge thank you to my patrons who allow me to make them on a regular basis, including my small fishes, my big fishes Greg and Anthony, my YouTube channel Wise Ones, Sith Lord 906, Video Gamer 75 and Havig, my sharks Jason X117 and Wow Such Gaming, and my Megalodons Sinus and Hazy Thoughts. But that is all for now. Thank you for watching again. If you want to support this channel, all the links are down below where you can get early access and screenshots of my footage collected, as well as some merch. And if you want more lore videos, check out my play this below and also check out my audio only versions of these episodes on your selected podcast app such as Spotify and Apple Music and if you did enjoy this please do like comment and subscribe to help get them out there and finally with all of that said I shall see you all in the next one cheers